Alrighty then. <laughs> so what do you prefer to be called? Um, well, it really depends what I'm doing. Yeah. So if I'm doing my stripping, then Sophie. Yeah. If I'm doing the other stuff, then Scarlett. Do you ever get them mixed up? Oh, no. Nah. No? No. Nah? Nah. I think it's kind of like, I put on a persona as well. So you sort of, the name comes with that. Well, I guess we should probably start off by saying exactly mm -hmm. what you do, why yep. you're here, and um, why you're an interesting person of Adelaide, I guess, <laughs> doing something a little bit different than what the norm yes, is. Yes, yes, very different. So what, what, does, uh, what does Sophie do? Okay, so I'm a stripper, yep. but not um, what people think a stripper is, which is, you know, like a club girl at like the palace or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't do that. I do um, triple X shows. Right. So I just go to people's houses or you know, a venue and I do like a Rondry Triple X show yeah, for, right. you know, it can be anywhere between five to like 200 plus people at a time. 200 plus people? Mm. Usually, you know, in Adelaide, the venues aren't that big. That would be like an extreme example, Yeah. but there's no real limit on how many people. It's usually about, you know, 50 so to you, 70 is probably a big party. When I think of a stripper, mm -hmm. I'm thinking a pole, fucking... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dollar, yeah. dollar yeah, notes Yeah, so that's not actually... What um, every stripper is, of course, that is, you know, yeah. in the clubs. But the stripping I do is more, you ring an agency um, and then, you know, you book it for your personal party. You might have, you know, organised so like a venue. Shows and yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So most people hire a venue, sometimes a hotel room or just a house. They're someone's, yeah. Out someone's the home. Yeah, yeah. Barbecue. Well, usually I'm indoors. I don't like going on grass, <laughs> but, you know, patios. I've is done that because anything can be in grass? Because that would fucking disturb me, man. Well, I don't it's know all the heels. No, it. no, it's the heels. I can't oh. wear my sexy shoes if I'm on grass. Oh, yeah, you'll fall over. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So, what, um, so that's Sophie, and what mm -hmm. does Scarlett do then? Well, Scarlett's a little more naughty. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> she does it a bit more of a more personal service. Yeah. Um, it's one on one. Yeah. Um, and it's escorting. Right. Yeah. And I mean, there's obviously some similarities between those two things as far as yeah. um, coming under an umbrella of, of sex work. Yeah, oh, absolutely. All it's all, it's even, you know, like cam, which I don't do, but cam work yeah. um, is all under under sex work. And how, how do you how do you get yourself into this? I mean, from, from, uh, from all reports that you hear in like the newspaper or from all reports that you hear mm -hmm. in, in uh, you know, um, mainstream media it always shows sex workers particularly escorts or mm -hmm. prostitutes being downtrodden um, yeah oh badly the um the stigma is really bad um yeah. and it's so inaccurate like of course there is you know the lower end of every but in everything yeah. you know not yeah. just you know escorting not that there's anything wrong with the lower end either yeah um but people only see that they i think they anything taboo they don't really um, try to understand they'll yeah. just go with you know what they see in the movies or yeah, yeah. you know and things from like 20 years ago like that aren't really overly so there's, accurate. there's like the movies is a really good example mm. of, of the way that we tend to popularize Absolutely. or portray things yeah. and it's popularized either in like the pretty woman side of things yes, or it's yes. like the full trashy fucking yeah junkie, yeah and even know. pretty woman wasn't really that accurate like that was like an in-between um although like i love that movie yeah but it was you know not very accurate um, Do you think a movie could be? Um, I haven't seen a lot, but I know there's, you know, like um, memoirs of a uh, coal girl, things like that. Yeah, that had the girl from um, Doctor Who in it. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't actually seen it myself, but I know. Page there or is... something, I don't know. Yeah, well, I've been planning to watch it. I just, you know, never get time. Yeah, yeah. But I think every person's story is different. Yeah. Um, and even the lifestyle of an escort can be different. But still, it's generally not what people expect. No, no, and no, you know you. They think uh, it's completely different. 
you know, I I think I found you on on Instagram and social mm. media, yeah, and, yeah, and too, um, yeah. it's uh, it's amazing to look from the outside and go, wait a minute, what is this girl doing? Yeah. You seem reasonably normal, and yeah, what we exactly, get told exactly. to, to expect. Yeah, it's very of, different. What people um, think they they don't realize it's like anything. Like you have a job. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily define you. Yeah, that's or, right. You know, people. In any in any industry, doesn't you know? You meet a cop out of work; he doesn't seem like a cop. Yeah, you know true. that kind of unless he's a narc. Thing. <laughs> Fucking narcs! I'll get you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, of course you're going to get cops that are you know cops regardless. But you yep. know, generally any job, you go to work, you know, you're a certain way. But out of work, you are just like everybody, just yeah, yeah, a yeah. person. Yeah. So I mean, how 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 did you start? How did you get into this kind of yeah. work? Yeah. Well, me personally. Um, I was actually stripping at yep. um, clubs yep. and just the hours were really getting to me, you know, um, I've only got a small group of friends that I like to hang out with, but I really wasn't even having time for them. Yep. Um, you know, I'm saving for a house and I just like, you know, nice things. Yep. And I just thought like, this, it's just getting too much. Like I'm doing, you know, 60 hour weeks. It was, and you know, I personally. That's a lot. Yeah. 60 hours It was ridiculous. Club. It was there was a lot of things. I was doing topless waitressing, a bit of computer work. So it wasn't just 60 hours in the strip club. It was What's just a combination. Like? Oh, so this is when I was doing a bit of videos and a okay. bit of cami, which I don't do now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all of that combined, I was doing some ridiculous amount of hours. That's huge. Yeah. And me personally, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I don't drink or do drugs. So yeah. trying to do that many hours and, you know, 10, 15 hour shifts straight sober is yeah. extremely difficult so and especially in that yeah, environment like yeah. a club environment I mean, yeah um, it's pretty overwhelming yeah so i kind of you know i would get tired you know yeah. like a normal person's gonna get tired True. so <laughs> you know i was you know and you you know you're dancing and you're moving around that's exhausting so i went you know what like this just isn't working out for me so yeah. i thought what can i do that's you know gonna give me the money that i want yeah um but a bit just a bit more manageable hours and then I thought of escorting and never looked back. Wow. Yeah. And how did you make that transition though? Like how do you, you know. I, uh, yeah, go from that, yeah. Is it, I mean, that seems like a fucking ballsy move. <laughs> it seems like a fucking ballsy move because I mean, I, I'm scared to walk down the street alone sometimes, <laughs> let alone go out and, and, uh, start a, uh, a a quick relationship with somebody <laughs> yeah no that's true i think it does definitely that's why you know everyone does that security yeah well i have a few protocols in place yeah. um not everybody's you know that goes into the industry can do it as quickly like they will you know ask for advice or there's a lot of um places that will help you yeah. you know understand you know how it all works so you do the right thing i just seemed pretty knowledgeable about it just from a couple of friends and i guess you know some people common sense is a bit different yeah so, yeah true yeah so it was, it was quite easy for me i was pretty lucky i, I just dove in head first and it was what kind perfect. of protocols do you have to make sure that um so pretty much you just do screening i won't go into the details but yeah. um when clients you know contact you each girl's different they have a different type of way they would screen that person um, even just advertising, if you're on certain sites, generally you'll get a different type of uh, traffic. Yeah. Um, that does help. Yeah. And price points. So if you are a little more expensive, generally you're going to get um, just less less clients that are going to give you hassle. Right. Yeah, generally. Are there places generally. that you won't go to? Are there like, you know, if I think that there's, you know, there's some bad fucking areas... And, you know, I'm not going to pick um, on any areas, but yeah, there are yeah. some bad areas. That well, generally, you know, I try not to be too judgmental mm -hmm. because, you know, every area can have a bad area. Absolutely. You and, know, within, and fucked up people can live yeah, in some good areas yeah, too. Yeah, that's right? something, you know, there's like, there's a lot of areas that have like new establishments. Yeah. I've been, I guess, being the price point that I am, it is people that, you know, if they have that kind of money spared, they're probably going to be in the nicer areas yeah. rather than the not as nice areas. But I haven't really thought of that. It's more how the client approaches me and the whole process that I go through yeah. rather than thinking about where they live. And um, yeah, on 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 the uh, on the Sophie side of things, mm -hmm. when you uh, if you're out, you know, you said up to two hundred people at mm -hmm. a uh, at a. I said that's very extreme. The yeah. most would probably be seventy or. 
80 okay, people at so a time. Okay, so even that, I mean, that's, yeah. that's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. How, do you, um, how do you stay in control in that kind of environment? Like, well, it is hard, but um, most girls... Because I'm industry. thinking like footy club. Yeah, oh, they are wild. It, they like, are so wild. They're yeah. crazy. Um, so most girls, not all of them, but we usually have an assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, not really security, but, you know, honestly, if something happened, they would be able to step in. But yeah. uh, people are so used to getting strippers. Like they're not – generally they might be drunk, but they're not going to do anything too crazy like yeah. attack you. Like they want – to have a good time yeah, yeah. and you to have you, a good you time. You don't get a so, stripper to attack a stripper. You get yeah, a stripper to Yeah, they might just do... Stri- <laughs> yeah, they'll probably do stupid shit like, you know, some guys, you know, spill beer or throw things and as long as, you know, you have a bit of a backbone, you just, you know, you make it part of the show, you just give them a little yeah. slap or tell them off or things like that. Um, it's it's not that hard to handle as long as have you... Have you ever had to really fucking slap someone? Like, a few times. Like a real good fucking I try not to because obviously, you know... Some that, of them like it. And. Yeah, or probably <laughs> even worse. It's like, you should be paying for this. No, but more yeah, because, true. you know, I don't want to get done for assault or anything like that. Yeah. So, you know, you got to think of from the point of view, you can't really just hit people. So I've ever had a guy, like, decently just slap my ass without asking or he didn't give you just a little tap that was all part of the show. I probably would give him a bit of a crack and be like, how do you like it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but generally, the main thing is just um, with the shows – we have a major no phone rule. Yep. Always having to tell guys off for no phones. That is a massive that would be thing. Really I, hard. I'm not too stressed, as in, you know, I'm very open about my job. It's just more, I don't want them to have the video for free when you need to pay to see it. Yep. So yep. I have, you know, my assistant there. He's in the background keeping an eye out. Yeah. And you just, if you see a phone, you just gotta do your best to tell them off, make them delete it if there's something, and. Yeah. Um, very worst case scenario, you know, you leave. Yep. I try not to. I'm probably one of the more tolerant strippers. Yeah. Um, but I also am better at implicating the rules. Yep. Some girls... Um, aren't, aren't clear on it. Yeah, aren't it's as like clear. It's like you've got to be master of yeah, ceremony. Or like you've got to they might be the too show. nice or whatever. Whereas, you know, I think I walk in, I have that confidence. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, we're not going to mess with her not kind of fuck attitude. Around. <laughs> yeah, I'm polite, but I just sort of clearly make it you know, a point that no phones, let's have a good time, don't ruin yeah. it for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Because it does. Like, if you're doing a show and really into it, having an amazing time, and someone pulls a phone out, like, you got to stop. It it absolutely ruins the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, true. And I say that to them. I'm like, you're ruining this for your friends. You know, this this is this guy's bucks party. Like, yeah. What are you doing? I don't say that, but I'm, you know, it's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I yeah. usually just say a quick, you're ruining this, you know, go outside if you need a text or, because I can't see what you're doing. Yeah. That's the, that's it, the best one. It's, I mean, it, it's kind of strange in that context. Like I, I haven't, I've, I've never thought about it in that context, to be honest with you. But it's, it's like a, um, it's like a, you know, a photographer or an artist yeah. getting their, their work taken and yeah, plagiarized yeah, 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 yeah. and they're not, no one's paying for it. No one's doing yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. So I, I would assume that you don't catch everybody who, who oh, does of course, that. And absolutely not. If you're in the industry you do have to expect that it's going to yeah. happen. And if you can't accept that as a potential consequence, then you shouldn't be doing the job. Yeah. And you said that you're pretty open about oh, what open. you do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. hence you're here. Yes. But um, <laughs> what, what did mum and dad think when, uh, you know, do they know what you do? Or? Well, I don't really have a lot of close family. Right. So I don't um, see my parents. Um, but honestly, I'm so open. Even if I did, I would just say, this is what I do. Yep. take it or leave it and if they didn't like it I go well this is who I am and I'm not going to change for anybody yeah yeah and so yeah so do you know do they know what you do do you know um, if they... I'm pretty sure like I've got um a brother who I've actually yep. just told um he was super supportive yep um I was actually really surprised but I kind of pretty aggressive when I told him I just went you know this is what I'm doing <laughs> just fucking scream it at and him. <laughs> if you don't like it then don't contact me yep. again so I was a little bit up front because I thought he would um, be a bit funny about it you know me being his sister oh, yeah yeah but absolutely. I think he you know he travels around the world he's um, a skydiving instructor so he's literally Man, been everywhere cool. yeah and he's a bit of a hippie so he's yeah. seen the world and he's a bit out there so I think he had a bit more of a broad well, other mind places in the world are very different to what to yeah what we've got yeah here. so I mean, he just went as long as you're safe yeah. yeah exactly exactly so he's seen a lot and he went as long as you're safe and happy yeah I support you and whatever you do 
and it's it's amazing when um, you know when you agreed to come on and have a chat about this stuff, and I started looking up a few different things of mm-hmm. you know all right. What are the what are the laws around in in uh, in South Australia or Australia mm-hmm. about prostitution, about stripping, about what you can and can't do? Yeah. And there are huge differences, and I don't particularly see a necessity for them, but there's a yeah, huge difference yeah. between being allowed to be a stripper and allowed to be oh, it's an massive, escort. which is kind of funny because it is very like the lines are very blurred, very blurred. Um, like especially my, like you yeah, say, you're doing yeah. a triple X show, so a triple X show is pretty fucking full on, and I'm. Probably one of Adelaide's most raunchy yeah. stripper. Um, so my shows are of the more extreme. And yeah, exactly. Like, I just think, you know, I can do this, but, you know, I'm apparently, you know, there's so many rules around the other, yeah, the other yeah. stuff. So I brushed up a little bit yeah. before <laughs> this interview because <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to seem like an absolute dickhead and quote something wrong. And I'll mm-hmm. still probably do that, but don't worry. That's all right. I'll help you. Thank I you. Can, I can help you out. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's like a, a $750 fine or something if you get caught being a Yeah, escort. something like that. Yeah, there's all rules around it because really... Um, well, and being... there's jail time. Like you yeah, can get fucking yeah. chucked in the But slammer. it really isn't what you think, like as in being an escort itself. Yeah isn't what actually gets you arrested. Like right now, I say I'm an escort. Yeah. A cop's not going to be like, see this, right. like I'm arresting you now, <laughs> like you admitted it. It's not actually being an escort. That's the issue because, you know, there's states that are legal. Yeah. Um, as long as you follow the rules yep. and, you know, you know, there's loopholes and things like that. If you're smart, you can do it basically legally. Yeah. Or, you know, they can't really do... Anything you just saying, I'm an escort. That yeah, means nothing. Like, because I just I just yeah. read this thing and and they like they uh, made like two hundred and something arrests last it's year. It's more brothel and, stuff. Yeah, there, it and was, it's not even and money laundering yeah, and oh, stuff like that. And it's all the nasty side, um, which they make. Tell you the truth, they make it sound nastier. Yeah. But you know, yeah, more the laundering and um, they associate it with bikies and yeah. which isn't even necessarily the case. They always seem to make it worse. That it's just they shut down a lot of brothels and make arrests to the you know i guess the owners or whatever yeah yeah i don't you know know too much about it but um have yeah, you ever worked in a brothel environment no not me personally a lot of girls will do it as a starting point because it really is it does teach you the basics yeah um you know people think brothel think dirty and feral which is not the case yeah i'm not saying there isn't that's what I'm there thinking. might be yeah exactly <laughs> which is you know it's it's people are going to think that there, you know, there, there probably is ones that are not as nice. Yeah. But they're actually, you know, well, they take safe... Well, there are some shit pubs as well. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, I mean, it's... Like it's, in anything. Like in anything, exactly. there's shit there's shit in everything. Yeah. But with brothels, generally, you know, the girls, that's their business, their body's their business. So they take... And they're not getting as much money as the high end. So yeah. they're taking extreme safety precautions. Yeah. Because, they, you know, they're getting a low pay. They're not going to risk... You know, they're not going to risk um, their health for not much money so um it's really it's a lot cleaner than you think yeah it's just a bit more transactional that's really the difference between me and them it's not really um anything else it's just that you know you don't go in there it's not like this sexy central experience it's pretty much just business get in get out type thing you know there are some that do give a bit more of a intimate service like you know i don't you know i speak to the girls in the brothel so i don't know exactly yeah but it's just more transactional, really. It, it seems, From what I know. Yeah. Look, it, it mm. seems like there's... Um, or I guess like in everything, I mean, information mm. is so readily available now. Yeah, yeah. And that people are so easily connected now. And, you know, looking at your social media... Yeah. You've got a fucking huge social media follow, following. Yeah, I have my, just my Twitter now. My Instagram got shut down. How many times? And that was going to be It's like question. eight times. Eight times. Yeah. That's crazy. Mainly for my stripping. I didn't actually have... Um, my escorting on there like people knew and it was kind of linked because I said I had my Twitter too yeah um, but it was just because Instagram does have more rules yeah and just having like a censored shot of me you know just topless covering my nipples was too much why is that? Uh, I did get a lot of reports from some let's say jealous strippers you know I'm quite successful in the business because I put myself out there advertising yeah. you know I might make a bit more effort and I think they just got a bit threatened in the sense that, you know, why are you getting the work? Well, yeah. I'm putting in the effort. So instead of them oh, yeah. looking at themselves going, oh, okay, let's team up with her or let's do what she's doing, they would go the other end and be like, oh, I'm going to report all her stuff. 
Because really, you're not actually meant to post anything sexually explicit. And a topless shot, even censored, or you in your underwear, yeah. is technically not Every shot I've ever put on Instagram allowed. of me in my underwear, fucking taken down <laughs> straight away, man. I know, you t- well, it's clearly, disgusting. it's too sexy. <laughs> oh, Absolutely, yeah. too sexy. Yeah, they, and that was all the complaints. I'm like, man, you're fucking blowing up Instagram, this is crazy, you've got to you get, stop you're gonna this. Break, you're going to break the internet. Exactly, exactly, and... and Fuck knows how, how you can break the internet worse <laughs> than what Australia's got at the moment. That's very true. But um, so that means that it'd be really hard to... If, you're, if your social media is getting shut down, doesn't that make it hard well, to get business? Well, the Instagram it, did I mean, make it hard. Um, for the stripping side, it's absolutely been affected. But I'm kind of well-known enough now and now I use my Twitter a lot more. Yeah. I still get plenty of work and people know me. Yeah. And yeah. I, just, I just have to push a little harder. Um, yeah, and that's about it. And you um, you travel around? You... Yeah, I go into state a little yep. bit um, when I get time. Um, that's really great. Yeah. You can have like a holiday as well. <laughs> so working holiday? That's yeah, it's usually what I do. So if I go on a holiday, it'll, I'll work as well. Yeah. Yeah. And and do you have to be aware of different laws in different oh, states? Oh, absolutely. And... I can't, I'm, I'm extremely knowledgeable with, you know, what states... You can yep. and can't do, and I make sure I follow those guidelines yep. to protect myself, and you know, do it the right way. Have you ever gotten to, you know, I'm again, uh, some streets are shit to walk down, let alone yeah, you know, yeah, that's true, go yeah. interstate, get yourself a hotel, have some fucking you know person who's essentially <laughs> you don't know at all, who's just mm-hmm. sent you texts. Well, generally, <laughs> I do deposits and or um, I have their ID, so generally yeah. it's. Not a lot of just um, they send me text and they come. They have to give me something usually. Yeah, right. Especially interstate as always deposits. Yeah. So really, they want to have a good time and they don't yeah. want to lose their money. Yeah. So and I know they're not going to rock up and be like, oh, you don't look like your pictures or you gave a crap service. Like that doesn't happen for me. So yeah. they're not going to get annoyed. They're going to want to come there and be like, I want to have this great time. So they're going to treat me extremely great. Yeah. Yeah. True. But. You know, there is times that isn't doesn't happen. Absolutely yeah. for girls. Um, but I think Have you ever had to ask someone to leave? Um, no, no, never had no. to ask anyone to leave. Like maybe, you know, people got a bit too into it and they might have done something that they haven't actually paid for, you know, they've paid for a certain service. <laughs> yeah. And they're trying to push the boundaries for, you know, a bit more of an extreme service which they haven't paid for. Yeah. Generally you just give, you know, implied things during that, you know, that's not on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's a bit of a mood kill. I'm like, no, no, you didn't pay for that. You know, I so try. I don't want to do that. With with stigmas around mm-hmm. uh, the sex industry and sex work and things yeah. like that, and then the very open conversations that happen, and the first thing that comes to mind, and, and I guess one of the major things that you know uh, has attention of sex workers and whatnot at the moment is the American president and yeah, uh, yeah, that's Stormy really fucking, what's her name, Stormy Daniels. Yeah. So there's the most powerful guy in the world who is pretty much it's. You know, of course he fucked her. And there's <laughs> well, there's yeah. no two buts about it. He's fucking Donald Trump, man. He's a moron. And, you know, let alone that, I guess, then there's, like, in Russia, he's yeah. he's got people saying, you know, there's girls pissing on him and there's fucking, like, apparently videotapes of this it. stuff and whatnot. <laughs> how, how does that... Do you think that that um, has any effect on, on the openness of what that industry is like? Do you think... I mean, it Definitely, seems so I would very think so, yeah. spoken about at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for some people it would be the opposite. Like some people would be a bit more um, owning it and defending them being like, you know, defending their industry. Yeah. Others would be like, yeah, I don't want to be associated with it. Yeah. Like they'll keep it on the down low. So it's all, it's all personal. Like everybody's different to how they see things and how they'll let other things affect them yeah yeah and so you know if you tried to put yourself in uh in in her shoes Mm -hmm. if you had if you were sitting there and tomorrow we get a new prime minister because we get a new prime minister like every fucking (laughs) every every other week yeah (laughs) and you went fuck that's a client of mine (laughs) oh shit now there's a news story that's come out that's you know yeah the new prime minister is for me i would be very surprised if that happens because um I'm extremely discreet about my clients. I yep. won't go into how, but um, I take a lot of precaution in protecting their identity and making sure, you know, they're not found out by anybody. Yep. So if, you know, he did that and, you know, someone like that in that position found out, 
got found out. Yeah. Well, then I don't know what he's doing on his end, but that's a bit silly. She got like 180 grand or something, eh? Yeah, but did she did she blackmail him? Is that what happened? I think so. Yeah, I see, think that's, that's how you get 180 see, grand. See, that's, well, that's wrong. Crazy. Whereas me, I, could, I completely right now, certain clients that I have, I could absolutely do something like that. Yeah. But to me, what she did was wrong. Yeah. You know, if you're doing that, that's just not on. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. If you take them on as a client, like the number one rule should be their discretion yeah. is important. Like he's technically done nothing wrong to her. He yeah, came as true. a client. For her to blackmail him, it's it's just horrible, and that gives the so, rest and, of us a and bad I haven't name. heard that yeah. point of view before I because the never. guy's a fuckwit. But yeah, that's you true. You still have to have some from, professionalism. I agree. About you. I absolutely agree um, on that point. But still, from the client basis, yeah, you just because you know you don't like someone or you think they're you know a dick or whatever, unless they're doing something wrong to you, and even then, if they're still doing something wrong to you, I don't think blackmails something you should be doing well, blackmail really shouldn't be a, a, a no for, no for, and, and with her like she's she will never get work again like why would anyone go with her if she's blackmailing people well she's just ruined herself yeah as an escort like no one would trust her yeah and whereas me it's so my most important thing is people trusting me and knowing that their privacy is absolutely more important to me than anything else and and how do you think that you build that that kind of trust it is hard. That's the point. So really, you just... It'll be very hard. It is. So you just... Um, is it like finding a good mechanic? Is it like finding a good mechanic who's going <laughs> yeah, to do well, the job exactly. and not fucking rip you off? And like, yeah, oh, yeah, mate, and you know, hope... I replaced this and I did yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Fucking... Did any of that need to be done? What exactly. It is very much. I guess people just sort of gauge you by when they contact you. They'll look at your site. My site is very professional. Um, they'll talk to me. And I guess they yeah. just... They make that decision on, I guess, just talking to me if they want to go ahead with that i guess i take that risk but generally they know i want to get paid yeah i'm clearly advertising as an escort do I people clearly... overstep that mark though do you do you get like um you know like the fucking pretty woman yeah like the guy's there and fucking they end up building this kind of relationship oh that's just ridiculous whatnot, I mean. that's just so silly so that doesn't happen because um, of course that, that could have, happen like, you know got and no, gone off with like the DJ like anything the like anything of course that could happen you know if you work in an office with somebody and you know you're the receptionist and they're you know just in an office <laughs> yeah. you end up together it's just like any workplace you may end up with someone yeah yeah um but of course being in the sex industry it makes the whole thing more sexual but it depends like if the escort or stripper is looking for a relationship it may very well build into that but me personally yeah. As much as, you know, I might, you know, get close to clients in a sense, you know, we have a good time, I like them as a person, it would never get beyond that point. Like yeah. feelings or, you know, wanting to be with them, no. Have you had a partner whilst you're doing doing stripping or escorting? Stripping, yes. Yeah. Um, not the triple X shows, but when I was doing topless waitressing and um, uh, the club work. Yeah. But not, not the triple X shows or the escorting. Not because someone wouldn't necessarily go out with me. You know, there is some people that would put up with it yeah. and be like, I'm willing to see it as a job, which is hard yeah. um, from a, for a guy to do that. But I personally don't want yeah. a boyfriend anyway. So to me, it's... It's a... Uh, yeah, it's no not matter, something, it I, something, yeah. something I want anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and do you work with people that... Because I, I think that would be one of the hardest things mm-hmm. if you're in that kind of industry. Yeah. And then uh, you're trying to maintain a relationship as well. Um, do, do you know people that are able to maintain a relationship? Absolutely, and, absolutely, yeah. Um, heaps of... Especially in the stripping. Yeah. Uh, the escorting is a little, little more difficult because obviously it is very taboo and, you know, it would be hard for anybody just putting the fact that it's work aside having your partner sleep with somebody else it would be hard and some people do not know how to separate in their mind um the difference between having sex with someone you know you're just cheating on your partner or having an open relationship to it's a job yeah Mm. you you might go to work and enjoy it absolutely but you're you know unless it is one of those times you fall for a client which you know if you're with a partner surely it's not happening you know you have a partner you go home you love him you want to be with him um, going to work, it, it's work. You yeah. might have a good time, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah, yeah. And really, he should be grateful. He gets it for free. Well, that's I'd be true. like, you know, she clearly likes you. Bloody, <laughs> think about the hourly rate, Everyone buddy. You, for this, man. It's just like more than a mortgage. What you're getting all this free time. You should be so grateful. So, what were you doing before you got into the stripping in the clubs and stuff like that? 
Um, I was just working in retail mostly. Okay. Um, I had a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was a manager in a few clothing stores. Yeah. I uh, just didn't pay enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, look. I mean, I, I think there's a lot you work of people. Hard and you really did not get paid well. Yeah, yeah. And there's look. There's a lot of people that if they could get money um, for doing something easier, then they'd definitely do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I see something, and I think it's a social media thing that there's a lot of young girls that um, look at and really judge themselves against other girls of their own age range and whatnot on yeah, social media. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and. You know, from being um, a pop- popular on social media mm-hmm. to being a influence influencer on mm-hmm. social media mm-hmm. to becoming somebody who is essentially um, being like a cam girl yeah, in any case. Yeah. Um, a lot of those girls kind of transition over and and start making yeah. money from that stuff. So, well, it's smart, I think, because you know, as the years go on, we are becoming a bit more of a sexual society or sexually accepting. Yeah. Um, not everybody. Do you think that we're like, becoming more that way, or do you think it's just being more open about it? Like because that's it's so true. Easy that's to a get that's a very good point. Um, probably being more open about it. Yeah. Um, but on social media, you know, I'm thinking when I was younger, you know, say ten years ago, posting a selfie of you online, unless I was completely clueless, as far as I knew, that was so bad. You know, the whole, you know, don't send selfies; it ruins your life. You know, don't send a lingerie photo to a boy because yeah. blah blah blah. Now look what we're posting, you know, look at all the teens yeah. now, like which is bad, you know, teens are doing it, but you know, early adulthood, everyone's the putting even more in line. It's, it's it's a success. Oh yeah, yeah. It's absolutely. not it's not going the opposite end. Yeah, you know, a, obviously a, if they're um, if they're too young, that's when there's a lot of issues because, you know, it's underaged. Yeah. There's problems with that. But you know, once you get older, if you're doing it, it's only seeming to benefit everybody. Well, I I I've noticed on social media lately and mm-hmm. i think there was some guys who got um who got arrested i think it was international yeah not in Australia, oh yeah i heard about that yeah like bearing their ass and like so they're basically yeah. just standing there and they're dacking themselves and like yeah. got their arms out and shit and standing at a you know really picturesque kind of mountain setting yeah yeah and it's like you can't do that this is a sacred kind of ground and yeah you're, you're dacking yourself and i thought fuck well that's pretty stupid yeah, you like, gotta be really careful with that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I think people just don't realise because you know there's I've seen not fucking heaps though. Like, there's yeah. lots of people fucking standing there and doing exactly the same thing, and chicks topless and shit like that. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? They're probably Is trying to stand up for it instead like, of planking. Yeah, it's like, it's wanking. It's like tits out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wanking in tits out. Hell yeah. <laughs> just to really get that. Like, I'm at the Blue Lake in Mount Gambia. <laughs> fucking awesome. I'll well, it's gonna it's out. gonna get the um it's gonna get the attention on social media. Well, and that's what it's that's all about. That's what everyone's about. It's all about the following. I personally don't care about the following itself. How many followers have you got? Um, I think because I'm just on Twitter now, it's seven thousand and something, which that's isn't. Yeah, I haven't been very active on it. Like only probably the last six months, I started using it because I had um, Instagram, which I had like thirty-five k yeah, on there that, followers. That so that's hates. what I mean. I don't really have much now, but I more care about the business I get. Yeah. So you know, the following numbers means nothing to me. Yeah. As long as I'm getting business and I'm happy, like you know, that's that's what's important. So do you do you set yourself up with a business plan? Do you, do you mm-hmm. say, oh, okay, I need to do this many shows or this many bookings? I need to oh, do this, in that this, way. This and... No, not really. Um, I'm pretty lucky. I'm in demand anyway. So generally I'm rejecting bookings rather than being like, where are they? Yep. There is times that they, it will be dead and I'll be like, oh, you know, where are they? Yep. But generally um, I'm only taking a limited amount anyway. So yep. there's, there's enough there. Shows I do, you know, I love to get them because – Unlike clients, you don't really have to limit how many shows you have. Yep. Um, you can do, you know, 10 on a weekend and it's, it's That's great. That's a lot of shows. Whereas clients, you know, I, I only want to see a few a week at the absolute most. Yeah. Um, that's not for everybody. Some people like to see more. Some people like to see less. Yeah. That's just my personal choice. I'd rather charge a little more and see a few less clients. And yeah. Because I do have the stripping, you know, that does help that. I can see a few clients and I've still got good money on the weekend too. So... It's just like we've just mm-hmm. had our AFL grand final. Yes. And it's yes. like fucking all the footy clubs are ending and they're all having like Mad Monday. And it's all, <laughs> um, uh, it's it's almost like a rite of passage for some of those Absolutely. clubs. Absolutely. Yeah. To get yeah. Even when, they, on board even when they lose, they get it to cheer themselves up. <laughs> yeah. So if like they lose, sad. they get a stripper. If they win, they get a stripper. And stuff. 
I used to have a boss that used to say to us, like, man, if you guys do good this month, fucking strippers at the end of the month. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he ended up owing us a lot of strippers. He was not a man of his word. (laughs) Oh, what? He only did it a couple of times. He's ripping you off. What a ripoff. Well, it became became something that was like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, back back years yeah, before in that industry it, it was fine and and it was a you know very masculine industry and and nobody oh, had okay. a problem with it but no as, it was the, i thought it was the opposite like for me it's gotten more accepting now rather than before maybe yeah, for right. you but again like anything everybody's different yeah um something that's acceptable for for a certain type of people it's not for someone else would you consider yourself a feminist mm, not really why is that well, I haven't really looked into even sort of what that means. Yeah. You know, the whole guidelines about it. Like, of course, I'm very, you know, all about empowering myself as a woman, but it's more just about people in general. Yeah. You know. I, I always think, and, and you know, a friend of mine who is, um, she's worked in pubs yeah. and stuff and, and still does now, um, in, you know, as a skimpy or as a topless yeah, barmaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, for that person to be able to have the strength and ability to go earn money and decent money, yeah. um, be able to look after themselves, be able to look after their own future, mm-hmm. and to be able to stand up in front of a you know a, a group of guys who are literally fucking hanging on every well not probably not word that she's saying, but <laughs> every move she's got, every going. move that she's got, <laughs> um, and the way that she kind of describes it is that you know this gives me my freedom, this gives me the ability no, to do that, what I in, want to do in that. In that aspect, absolutely agree with that. That yep. is how I feel. And when I'm doing, for example, the shows, um, I absolutely love it. Like I love shocking people. I love wowing people. And I love entertaining. Like I'm, a, yep. I'm definitely an entertainer. That's why I do both. Yep. It's very unusual for um, a stripper to do escorting too. It isn't like the stripping side. Is that it's a no-no? very, very separate. Well, I think it is a no-no. Not so much, um, you know, there's a rule about it, but the girls... They're doing stripping because they don't, you know, they're not doing escorting. Yeah. Generally, if you're doing escorting, you're not going to do stripping because it doesn't pay as good. Is there a stigma within, like, you know, if you're working mm, at a club or sadly, something? Sadly, yes, yes. Yeah. So there, and because obviously the the laws are blurred, you have to be very careful, um, because you know you can't do stripping and start escorting where you're stripping. Yeah. But you know that doesn't happen. Or you know you run in, you do a show, you leave. You know you're not there sleeping with everybody. That's just not the atmosphere or what what it is. People yeah. just think, oh, you're an escort, you're doing your show, and then you're off out the back with some guy. Like, absolutely yeah. not how it works. Yeah. You go there, you do your show, you have a good time, you leave. Yeah. And then, you know, people separately will contact you as an escort to come see them one-on-one at their hotel or whatever, their home, do you completely Do get people different. asking you at strip shows? Like, hey, man, you know, you're an extra 50 bucks out the back. Yeah, well, generally, like and... anything, like putting aside that I'm an escort, absolutely. Men can be pigs <laughs> so back when i was doing topless waitressing you will you know get some drunk you know just ask i was like hey babe like let's go out the back but it's not because i'm an escort because back then i wasn't it's just because they're drunk and they're stupid and horny yeah, yeah. so they're just gonna ask anybody be- or you know a girl they think's hot not going oh you're an escort i'm gonna ask you they don't even know yeah you know i go there as sophie they wouldn't even know about even if they're on my social media generally even if they've seen it, they can see she's here doing a show. She's not here escorting. Yeah, I mean, when so uh, it's not ever. It doesn't for me. No boundaries are crossed. Luckily. Yeah, and yeah. you kind of when I approached you and said, "Hey, mm-hmm. do you want to come and have a chat about mm-hmm. like sex industry work and and stripping?" You you agreed, and and we yeah. we got messaging back and forth, and and you kind of said, "You do realise that I'm a high class es- escort as well." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Well." <laughs> Well, yeah, because I wasn't sure. That? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, because you know, some people see the Sophie and they don't realise that it's both. Yeah, you know, for yeah. me, because it usually isn't. So I go, oh, hey, you know, you seen me as Sophie? I went, hey, look, I do this too. We can have a chat about everything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and you know, I appreciate you coming on and being open about that stuff yeah, because it's something that I think that there is so much built up stigma of. Absol- yeah, absolutely. And particularly like Hollywood kind of fucking stigma and things like oh, that. Oh, that is so inaccurate. Not especially not here and like Adelaide's small and Australia is not. Not like that. Well, that was going to be my next question. Adelaide is very small. Like mm-hmm. Adelaide, everyone knows everyone. Absolutely, kind of yeah. So, uh, are you from Adelaide? Are you? Yep, you, I've always been here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, always been here. Do you run into clients? Um, I've seen. Or have you run into clients? <laughs> I've seen clients like just out in the street, or I'm in the shops, or whatever. Sometimes they give me like a look. Other times, 
you know, we just pass ways. I would never say anything unless they came up to me. But even yeah. then, as much as I wouldn't care if they said hi to me, technically they shouldn't. Yeah. And that's a thing I've heard other stories of girls being out with friends that didn't know or family or even a partner yeah. or a date, a real, like a proper date. Oh, man. And a client's gone, oh, hey, Jessica. And, you know, that's not their, that's their working name. And then, yeah. you know, it can be a disaster. So generally people are smart enough to know see you in the real world it's like we don't know each other yeah you know in that way but some people are a little bit silly yeah and uh, do people you know on on that side of that question Mm -hmm. i guess the opposite side of the question i asked Mm -hmm. you before about you know clients and crossing that line into relationships Mm -hmm. do you do you get the client that is like oh man this girl she fucking really likes me i reckon it's gonna be on (laughs) yes so all so, the time. <laughs> yes. So does I, that mean you're doing your job well or does it mean uh, that this too is well fucked? sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I think I'm doing it too well. Yeah. Um but the thing is I enjoy my job. I yeah. enjoy sex. Yeah. I love making people happy. Yeah. So we're having a good time and everything, but I'm very honest. Like if a guy starts, you know, what I think maybe is crossing a line is and he's getting too emotionally involved, I'll say something, you know, I'll just maybe not directly like, Hey, by the way, just remember you're paying me. Yeah. I I would just say things a little bit more businessy in that moment just so maybe he gets a little bit of a wake-up call. Yeah. So there's just little things you try to do. Um, but generally, you know, you're they know it. I think they're just a bit delusional at the time. Yeah. Like they want to believe it because it makes the experience more better, more fun for them as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so it's, you get a few loose ones and I usually just cut them off or, you know, say to them, you know, obviously their health and well-being is important to me too if they feel you know if i feel like me seeing them is only hurting them i'll say you know maybe we shouldn't be doing this anymore i don't think it's healthy for you and and there's a lot of um i i think there's a lot of mental health concerns around an industry like that yeah in any Um, industry yeah and as bad as uh and this is like way fucking different kind of um work but you know you you see a lot of um a lot of uh, soldiers or a lot of um, yeah, that's true. armed forces yeah. people have PTSD and have mm-hmm, issues mm-hmm. from what not necessarily the whole job that what they've done but something that they've experienced in the job yeah. and it's like it's real deep ongoing yeah, issues that they have yeah that's very true that's very true um, the difference is between those people and you know a high rate of PTSD and things like mm-hmm. that in that industry is that they've got a lot of a they've got a big support network um, yeah. and they deserve a big support network but I, I don't see why the oldest industry in the world doesn't deserve the same type of support network. yeah well I think there's two things with that um Definitely, you know, people put it down so it does make the job harder. But then other times people think, oh, you know, you might need help or whatever. But generally, if you're doing it, you're pretty happy. Like on the yeah. escort side, I don't get mentally affected by it. Yeah. It's probably more the clients. Like I said, they get attached and they're the ones having needing help because it's like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't love me. I'm, I'm paid. Do you slip I'm a paid, big honey. blue card or it's <laughs> like, look, man. No, no. I'm not going to take your bookings anymore. But here's another number you can call. It's Beyond well, Blue. Well, we did. We, speaking of that, we actually did um, at Sexpo, we raised money for your blonde, Beyond Blue, actually. Oh, yeah. You were um, at Sexpo. Yes, I was at Sexpo. We did, um, we were doing some like, um, we raised money for Beyond Blue just doing lingerie photos and we made some money as well doing topless photos. Yep. Um, so that was really great. Yeah, that was really good. So how, how does um because sexpo is is you know it's a big fucking thing yeah lots of people love going to sexpo it was good do you find they're the same people that after sexpo are the ones going oh fuck that's a you know terrible decision to be that kind of (laughs) a a stripper or a sex worker no generally even though when they're they were you know people that were sexually open-minded you know couple a lot of couples that you know were exploring their you know more sexuality you know 10 years down the track I've never been to a sex bar. Oh, honestly, it's not as crazy as you think. Like, because of my lifestyle, it was nothing like, I'm a triple X showgirl, right? Yeah, so I nothing want- surprises no, me. No, <laughs> no. And I wanted to do triple X there, but um, it's to do with the licensing. Like, they, I think they, they don't have the next level up license or whatever yeah. it is to do actual triple X there. So you could only do a strip. Right. So I didn't bother. I was like, I'm not a, I don't just strip, you know. <laughs> to me, unless I'm, you know, doing the raunchy stuff, it's pointless. Yeah. You know, I want to I wanna shock and I want to you know, have a bit more fun. Um, so it was, compared to my lifestyle, it was tame as, but of course, to people that are not in the sex industry, you know, just a couple at home or whatever would go there and, they, you know, there's all these dildo shops and lingerie stores, like little stalls there. 
um, these wild strip shows. I saw a picture of like that was a, pretty um, cool. Was there? There was a like a Game of Thrones like dildo fucking. Throne oh yeah, and there shit. was some pretty funny stuff like that. Yeah, and there was like this big like dick ride. It was like a giant penis, and you went inside it and watched this like virtual reality as like you're the sperm and it was pretty funny it was it was a bit silly but you know it was good to go in there and just have yeah. a little laugh and it like moves did they have like the wall shed mechanical ball but with a big cock yes that's what it felt oh, like that's what they've got that's fucking awesome it was pretty it was it was like that it was very it was i don't know i don't think they had the oh the ball thing it was like a giant version of that and you're inside it right. you're inside the cock rather than on it man see they need to do both i know i think riding the cock's a little more fun <laughs> That'll be the bit that we'll uh, edit into the short right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they had like, a, they had a big penis thing. Like when people, I think it was like a good meeting point. People would be like, "Oh, where are you? I'll meet you." Like meet at the big penis, and there was this like penis statue thing. Well, LA's got the malls balls, so we're kind of used to like you know. Yeah, meet, exactly. We'll meet at the balls. So. Well, exactly. We were meeting at the balls, so just the meet same at the thing. cock. <laughs> the cock and balls. <laughs> that's that's a pub, isn't it? The cock and balls. Is it? I don't, I don't know. know. It's I don't, a good I pub don't... name though. It's yeah. better than like the fucking. What is Better it copyright that now. The lettuce and slug or no, slug yeah, and lettuce. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, slug yeah. and lettuce. Yeah, I've heard of that. I don't go to pubs or anything. I don't drink, so. I don't so really know have pubs. you never drank? No, like I've drank before. Yeah. Not very, very rarely. Just when I was a bit younger. Just yeah. you know, had a little bit, but I've never been a partier. Never gone no. to parties. Never gone to clubs. None of that. It took me to be a stripper to actually to go to a party. No shit. Because I'm the entertainment for the party. <laughs> so when you were, you know, when you were young, like everybody kind of as a kid, they're mm-hmm. asked, what do you want to do when you're older? And, and um, you know, mm-hmm. there's, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a nurse. I want to be. <laughs> Did you stand up and say, like, I want to be a fucking sex worker? Well, or? shockingly enough, people think, you know, like, like in, um, for example, in Pretty Woman, I remember there was a comment there. She's like, oh, no one, you know, when they're young, you know, dreams of being this when they're old, like when they're young, they want to be it when they're older. That's totally wrong. Yeah. There's a lot of people that actually, when they're younger, they might not know what it is because, you know, you're young, you're not going to exactly know what sex is or the whole thing is. Yeah. But I did, I always knew that I was very free spirited and very out there. Um, and, you know, as I got a bit older and seeing, you know, the glamorous girls in magazines and yeah. all that, and I went, you know, I want to do that. So I started, I actually started nude modeling to start off with okay. because I, you know, I had posters on my walls of, you know, half naked girls, not because yep. I was, um, you know, into them, not, you know, I am bisexual, so yep. <laughs> that was probably a little bit of it, but you know, actually I looked up to them and went, wow, they're so stunning. You know, I want to, I want to be that. I want to do that. So that was inspiration for me. Yep. And I guess it kind of was just a progression that went from the nude modeling. I did do clothes modeling as well. Um, and then, you know, top was waitressing, stripping shows escorting yeah so and it definitely so was but it was always there to do something that absolutely was yeah in the spotlight so to speak and yeah 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 um were you shooting yourself when you first did it um when i did topless waitressing i actually remember my first shift at a topless bar um i was very free with being nude like i used to not wear a bra under my top and all that it was probably just walking out and seeing like you know like 30 guys drinking beer like staring at my boobs that was in the moment was a bit like oh but it's because you're not used to it yeah it wasn't i don't even think it was a fact that i was topless i actually think it was more that it was just a new job yeah and maybe going everyone's nervous at a new job yeah yeah maybe going oh i'm I'm topless just made it a bit more weird (laughs) yeah but no i eased into it and that was great doing the um escorting because i'd you know been doing the stripping and the topless like for so long and you know clearly i've had sex before it was nothing to me. It really, yep. for not for everybody, that's not, you know, speaking for other girls. But for me, it was easy. I wasn't nervous. I just flowed into it. And after my, you know, first time that I did it, I was like, yep, this is exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets, no second thoughts. So like leaving that night, leaving, leaving that shift. Yeah. Leaving my like, and he wasn't, he wasn't even, he was actually a very crappy first client. He was a bit, um, he was just a bit, um, pushy and I think actually a part of that maybe was me like when I first started I did feel like I had more clients that pushed the boundaries but now looking back I think it was more me not um using the right wording when you know they're approaching me I probably wasn't as clear with the rules yeah. or the boundaries it was clear enough but I feel like they probably thought oh, she's new I can push the boundaries a little bit how do they know that- you're new oh, they're see escorts all the time you you've never been there and all of a sudden you pop up yeah okay you know it's not 
people don't realize how big that site is like people follow escorts um all that kind of thing you just they, they don't go to work and go oh, hey by the way i see an escort every week and i've been following all these high-end escorts for the last few years like yeah. they're not going to talk about that yeah yeah i guess so but yeah, there's a lot of people really that will the... yeah they will monitor online and then go oh wow you know she's cute or who's coming to adelaide or whatever or yeah whatever state they're in so generally yeah they'll see that you're new or even just the way your ad is they can tell you know you don't have reviews the ad clearly says like it's only been up since you know whenever like a week ago or whatever yeah generally they're like oh here's a somebody new fresh me yeah oh god it was definitely like that I got ambushed when i first started with really? messages with messages not literally no not like oh, hey, cool. person, <laughs> not like, like oh, just no. oh, i'll meet you down here and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no that it's was wrong wording there the exactly fucking... <laughs> just with text you know like because yeah it is like new is always fun new is always yeah. exciting so people were messaging like crazy and yeah what you know People are really shit at sending messages at the best of times. Oh my god, yes. What's the you know what's the typical fucking drongo message that you? Well, would generally get? it's not because with me you do. Oh, I absolutely do get drunk dicks often. <laughs> I imagine that you would all. But the time. I personally don't see clients if I knew they were really drunk. Yeah. I generally like you know if someone's had a few drinks or whatever, it's all cool. But if they're like paro, you can tell. Yeah. yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with getting drunk. It's just they're not going to have a good time. It's going to be, you know, they're going to be half out of it. You know, I want to make sure, you know, they don't wake up the next day as well. Not happy they spent that money. Yeah. Um, mine's more pre-bookings. So okay. generally the clients will say, hey, my name's such and such. Um, I'm after an hour GFE. Yeah. Um, they might list a few things they really like. Oh, I really like this, this and this. Um, let me know when you're available. Yeah. Okay. Or are you available at but such and such time? But do you just get... Is your phone constantly getting messages from people yes. just going like, "Are you an escort? Can I fuck you?" No, <laughs> no, they I never, they, they never ask if I'm an escort. Never ask me. They, so they're pretty they, clear. They know that. Bit. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they just, they just message, "Hey," or "Hi," and I'm like, "Hi." After a booking, you just get a lot of time wasters. Yeah. Me being so expensive, I will get less time wasters. Yeah. Um, but you do still just get people just asking stupid questions. It's not, not that there's. If someone's generally asking a question because they don't understand, that's fine. Yeah. But I mean stupid questions where they're just being lazy. They're not reading the website. They probably half time don't have intention of booking. It's like, I put all this effort into my website. Read it. All you need to yeah. do is look on rates and services. Like, it's not that hard. But I think people are just lazy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so or if they ask questions, much, I'll say, How much oh, time do you spend making, you know, doing your marketing and, and oh, updating your website? It's constant. Fucking... I couldn't even tell you. It's absolutely constant. Yep. Um, I'm always I'm pretty lucky I've um, um, got a close friend who's a photographer so we yep. work together so I've for me to do a photo shoot um, you know every few months if I want to is much easier than someone else you know because they have to contact and you know spend a lot of money and yep. do all that whereas me you know we could just be hanging out and I'll be like hey let's do a photo shoot or oh, let, you know that kind of stuff <laughs> but you so, still have to get those photos and get them onto the website and get them up. Well, I like the, up. I do my, I, I'm a photo editor. That's, um, okay. I, um, I guess you should say day job. Yep. So. So do you um, edit other people's photos? Yes, I do. I do as well. Yeah. We, the photographer and I run a little bit of a business in that way. I, you know, edit the photos and um, he shoots the models, obviously. What, what's the, what's the major thing that you need to edit? in the photos oh it's just just minor stuff you know like um lighting making sure it's can, like anything any glamorous photo um you know just making sure we all look you know the little, little imperfections yeah. Yeah. it really depends some people want the major glamour look where they you know they got the flawless skin yeah. you know the shiny hair um you know the they might want their makeup a bit more enhanced things like that um other people do want a more natural look so it's really up to the client yeah and um, we get a lot of um escorts strippers or just family like like a mum might want just something for her husband or yeah, things yeah. like that so it's really up to the client what they want and yeah. so on that i mean do you get a lot of couples oh for, for um for, for the escorting, escorting side yeah. yeah yeah i do actually i get a lot of couples yeah um i think again they get to that point in their relationship where they a bit more sexually adventurous there's probably quite a lot of trust built between them and they just want to try something new 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do um, like so. I've heard some fucking pretty fucked up stories of yeah. what people want do escorts share, to do. do well, there was years years ago. A mate of mine, he um, uh, he, uh, we worked together, and he's like, man, I just found out fucking a friend that I've had for many many years is yeah. a, is an escort, mm-hmm. and I found out because she was like she was drunk at a like a, a party, oh, and she okay. was telling us like, hey man, I'm fucking doing this shit, and this really rich guy. Is um he's paying me five hundred dollars to shit on a glass table while he lays underneath <laughs> it whacking off, and I'm like, what the fuck? Fuck off, man! That no, is some, bullshit. No, no, that I believe that would happen. Yeah, well, that, this was years ago People before shit was on the well, internet so look, much. And oh, now, okay, yeah, that's so like okay. Porn has corrupted us. Like oh, yeah. that's why porn made people like that more common. Like, like <laughs> I actually don't get a lot of fetish. No, um, I think because so you've never been asked to shit on somebody. <sighs> Oh yeah, I've been asked. I don't. It's. Yeah, I know. It's hilarious. Have you shit on anyone? No, no. I don't offer. That's I know. I'm sorry. I'm boring now. No. No. It's. No, it's, no, it's actually. That's, that's, it's actually. There's. A, it's called um scat. Um, yeah. I don't offer scat as part of my service. Um, do a lot of people though? Is that a thing no, now? No, I think not so much now. I do get maybe every a few a month. We'll say, hey, do you offer scat? But I, it is on my site that I don't offer. So a lot of people would probably read that. You know, the people that do decide to read something yep. will go, oh, she doesn't offer that. Um, other people will just message you. Um, because there's like ask. there's some things, and and again, like social media and the internet has a lot, to, we've got a lot to be thankful for, and there's a lot to fucking blame it for as well. <laughs> yeah, badly. And, and like I was watching um, uh, Hot Ones on, on YouTube the other week, and yeah. I don't know if you know what Hot Ones is. No, no, no. I've, I've seen it, but I haven't actually watched it. I've seen like the little thing. Yeah, it's just an interview and they're eating hot chicken and um, yeah. there's one with Kevin Hart and Kevin Hart's like just fucking crazy he's a hilarious guy and they just had a um, a truth or dare hot ones mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. eat the chicken or tell us the truth the first question they gave to, to Kevin Hart and you know one of the biggest movie stars in the yeah. world at the moment is do you eat ass and I'm like <laughs> fuck man that's a pretty fucking upfront question to be oh, asking someone I would someone. answer that hands down absolutely what did he say though he ate the chicken <laughs> like <laughs> He ate the well, hot I'm chicken. Well, I'm sorry, but him eating the chicken means he eats ass. So that's a bit silly. He should so, He may as well have just said it. Uh, these things, like, you wouldn't have heard that. You wouldn't have heard somebody asking that question, like, five years ago on television, let oh, alone yeah, to, like, a, you know, a huge movie star. Yeah, that's true. That's so funny. That's so funny. Is this shit being normalised? Is it... Well, well, um, whatever you want to call it, ass eating, if you want to put it in that yeah. term, um, is actually very common. So I get a... A lot of clients that will eat my eat ass. ass. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds, sounds, it sounds like a bit weird, but no, it's actually, you know, rimming. Like it's, you know, it's all clean. You know, you sh- everyone's showered. It's not yep. gross how you think. Um, so probably 80% of my clients would absolutely eat my ass. So you're saying Kevin Hart, 100% ass eater. If he ate the chicken, he ate the ass. Why would he, what, he would just, oh, no, that's not my thing. He ate the chicken because he didn't want to confess. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I don't. What a silly boy! I would have been like, yeah, like hell yeah. yeah. But he's doing like kids movies and shit. <laughs> it just seemed like a super odd question to. That, okay, maybe that's why he didn't. May, you know what? Maybe he didn't say it more for the inappropriateness of it, not so much. Do you think that that's wrong though? Do you think that people should be open to be able to express? I think so. I think obviously to be hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think in a sense, absolutely. Like you know, he's not like there was a kid there. He's not in the no, kids movie, no. and you know, he's like, hey, kitty, this is what I do. You know, then. <laughs> That'd be pretty fucked up, you know. But if you well, know you've got two adults like, um, talking, you know, in a bit more of a different environment, yeah. there should be no reason you can't be a little bit more open. And, and when you've got people like uh, like Ice Cube being yeah. like in kids comedies and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, stuff yeah, exactly. like that, I mean, the guy's done some pretty fucked up that, shit. Exactly. And, so it shouldn't shouldn't really affect it. You know what you do. You know, there is certain things that are going to affect it, but I mean, you, you know, there's a place for everything. Do you think about that for yourself in your future? Do you think- um, I've always thought about that. Like yeah. um, when I went into this industry, like even just the modelling side of it, um, I thought, you know, later on down the track, but I made the decision that I was willing to accept any potential consequences later. Um, I'm very business orientated, so I'd be, I'm going to be running my own business anyway, myself. Yeah. Like myself is my business, the photo editing you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm not really going to have to have a boss that goes, oh, hey, you know, here's an interview. Oh, sorry, we found out you're a naughty, naughty girl. You, you know, you eat ass. We can't hire you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Your breath stinks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Oh, sorry. At least you'd have a good reason for it. At least it wouldn't just be Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, your breath stinks, man. 
I've been eating ass this morning. Uh, no, and that's fuck you, I'm not ashamed. No, but ass, ass is fresh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, I, I have clients that, yeah. guys obviously, that absolutely love having their ass eaten. Really? If the guy loves getting his ass eaten, he's going to have the freshest ass out because he does not want to be paying X amount an hour. You rocking up, him, him being like, here's my ass, love. And you being like, sorry, no, I'm taking your money because you're not clean enough. Like, Have they, you had to do that before? No. No, cool. everyone that, has... That would be pretty disappointing. I'd be like, I thought I was going to get to eat some ass and you've ruined it for me. What is this? Put that away. No, that no, I've been... Fucked up. But no, that's the thing. People, it's not like that. Like people, you know, like anything, like you have a shower, you know, if you're going to have sex, you know, you're not going to yeah, yeah. be all gross and yuck and then see an escort. Like, or yeah. your partner, you don't even want to be like that for your partner. Exactly like, right. You have a bit, with a partner, it's probably a little bit like a bit of morning breath or you look a bit crap, it's not a big deal. But if you were having a one night stand or yep. anything like that, unless you're yep. both completely blind drunk, you're going to care about how you smell. You're going to have your true. hair done, you're going to be deodorant on, you know, you're going to be clean. It's the same thing. If a guy wants his ass eaten or if a girl wants her ass eaten, they're going to have a clean They're going to clean that shit. Yeah, they're going to make that shit all glamorous. So, and I, I guess there's, you know, people have businesses around those kind of things. And um, what's that fucking, I forget the bloody place's name. They do all the piercing and they do all the fucking, um, the, like, laser hair removal. Oh, yeah, the, oh there's heaps of places like that. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So there's, like, you know, anal bleach and happening. Yeah, yeah, and there's exactly. Fucking all people, sorts of yeah, stuff. exactly. It's, um, so those things becoming a norm. Oh, absolutely. Well, I get, um, I get dermabrasion, which is, um, you can get it on your face. It's just like a more, a more, um, a rough exfoliator. Just gets rid of the dead skin, makes you look young and fresh, etc. Bullshit. Yeah. Um, it does actually, you know, clear your skin quite nicely. I actually get that done on like, my whole body. So I remember being in there one day in the place I go to and I said, oh, like, can you do my back? Like, I just, you know, I get a bit of dry skin, you know, because I'm always um, showering and um, I'm a bit lazy with moisturising. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's normal. Um, I do people's butts sometimes. And then she probably thought I was going to have a giggle and I was like, what? Can you do my butt? <laughs> so now my butt is, like, super smooth because it's, like, always, like, really rejuvenated Exfoliated skin. Exfoliated. Yeah, it's, per- it's, it's soft. It's never been softer. I'm so excited. your ass gets a facial. It does. It gets a facial. And your, uh, like, so... Your routine mm-hmm. of obviously cleanliness and yeah, yeah, beauty absolutely. products, and I mean, you, your your business is yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, how much do you think that you would have to spend, like, if you were to put that as a business expense? Oh, honestly, I would have no idea of the expense. Is it a lot? Oh, it's, it's a lot, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because, um, you know, I'm very, I'm, a, I'm probably a little bit more of a hygiene freak than some people. Yeah. Um. So I've got a lot of like you know, hygiene products, things like that. And does that, I mean, to me, you just saying that I'm a hygiene freak, but I do triple X shows at yeah, well, Bucks parties yeah, well, and lot, I'm an escort. Yeah, I mean, those I things don't kind of add well, up to me. Because people don't, they think, because exactly, people think dirty, but it's not like when I do my shows, like I have um, a sanitizing spray. So uh, it's... Sorry, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, exactly. So it's um, antibacterial. So when, you know, I'm doing my dildo show or whatever... Um, my dildos are completely sterilized at all times. Yep. So, and th- this is the thing, like guys are dickheads. I'll be at a party. A guy will, you know, grab my dildo and I'm like, well, now I can't put that in myself, can I? Because you've just touched it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I get a bit shitty. I'm like, or they'll grab some random thing in the house and go, put this in you. It's like, just because I'm willing to cram myself with my own dildos doesn't mean I'm willing to put this random thing that I have no idea where it's been. That in shows me. a like, fair level of disrespect as well. Oh, usually I just tell them I just I just usually give them some shit and make a laugh. Like I don't get offended. It just shows people don't realise. Um, you know, it, it's it's clean. It can be clean yeah. differently. And so as long as you take the precautions, you know, like I said, sanitising. You know, it's your own stuff. Yeah. And same with clients, you know. You know, there's a lot of safety precautions. So you spray them down with your sanitizing spray. <laughs> just like, all right, man, fucking. No, I just make bit, sure. You're a bit iffy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just make sure they're showered first. Um, obviously, after touching money, washed hands. And especially if they're smokers, I'm very strict. Like, yeah. ex- like brush teeth and all that is a standard anyway. Yeah. But if they're a smoker, I'm super strict. Like, please make sure you have not had a smoke before. You see me, like, go wash your hands mouthwash shower all that stuff yeah yeah and do you do you find um that 
you know, another thing that comes up is is a lot around drug use and a drug oh, abuse. Oh, so many and people like think that. that. I think because in the um, sex industry, one, you have money, so you could technically afford all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Two, in the stripping especially, you're exposed to it. Like, there's people are partying, all the drugs yeah, and alcohol, yeah. and that kind of stuff. So I think that's where the link is. Yeah. But me personally, like I said, I do nothing. Like, and that's yeah. not just me saying that. I personally have nothing against it. Like people doing that, you know, cool, have a good time. Yeah. Um, but people think, oh, you know, oh, the, she's an escort and she's having sex for money. She's depressed. She, yeah. Where has her life gone wrong? She's probably an alcoholic or drug addict. Yeah. That part of it is incorrect. If yeah. someone is doing drugs or is drinking or whatever and she's a stripper or she's an escort, she's not necessarily doing it because, oh, I'm an escort, I'm a stripper, I'm sad in life. Yeah. Um, it would just be because like any person, someone could be an accountant and it, what they will go drink and have some fun too. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. it's just people as people, it, drugs and alcohol was a bit, is quite big, sadly. Oh, it's it's, it's really massive. Bit, I mean, a little bit more full, a little bit more full on than it should be. Well, um, I think that, and and drugs and alcohol are I mean, drugs and alcohol are the same thing. They're they're drugs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And and I think that it's really naive um, to think that we are able to put laws in place that will stop people like this war on drugs. Oh, it's mm, always going to stop yeah. everything. That's absolute bullshit. Because <laughs> it there's a reason why a monkey masturbates, and it's because the <laughs> monkey wants to feel good. It's the same reason we masturbate. <laughs> yeah, now, absolutely. If that monkey could get some fucking cocaine. Do you think the monkey would be doing the cocaine? Of course it fucking would. It wants to feel good. It's a yeah, chemical reaction in your brain yes. that is is doing it. So yeah. we have receptors in our brain. They mm-hmm. want to get specific things to that yeah, receptor absolutely. to make ourselves feel good. So, yeah, so exactly. we do it. So when drugs are really harmful, and, and this is the same thing that I think about, you know, reading through some of the discussion that they're having about laws and stuff yeah. with, with sex work industries, when something is perceived as very harmful, do we just try to ban it and encourage people to yeah. do it uh, more undercover yeah. or do we try to address the problem absolutely that, that is there that and is how it should there be there has to be a problem with um uh you know there, there would be a higher drug use per person in the sex industry compared to accounting yeah that's true pretty much because of money yeah um and partying Yep. People generally, people are partying. They there would be a lot of people that are doing drugs and drinking, just yep. because that's the whole part of the party scene. It can be, yeah, um, absolutely, and you know it's just more accessible. Yeah, people more having accessible, fun. And, yeah. and you know. But you got to think it's not even just the sex industry. You got to think people going out on the weekend. So it's not so much just the sex industry. It's the party part of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's all you know having fun, going out. Think about the people on the weekend. It'd be pretty much the same thing. Well, speaking Just of people strippers on the weekend, happen to go to those parties. It's it's you know one of the big things that we're seeing in our local news at the moment is every weekend dudes kicking the fuck out of each other on Highland yeah, Street and people so full on. It's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Much. Those and and again, it comes down to really simple things as yeah. to why there are people fighting like that. Yeah, and it comes down to not... animalistic. <laughs> we go out. We yeah. try to put our best everything on so we attract the opposite sex or you know mm-hmm, where we want to attract remember clean your, clean your ass out mem- remember make your ass all glamorous yeah fucking chuck super wipe that <laughs> motherfucker and then when people aren't getting that attention back mm-hmm. they go out and they start to fight again let's go yeah, back to absolutely. monkeys monkeys yeah, exactly. in a fucking cage man they're going to be fighting it's wild They're people are wild so wild deep down do, do you think that um, that and we've we've also what we've got the lockout laws and stuff like that yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. Do, do you think that that's caused a problem or is that opened up a problem or? um well i don't personally i don't go to clubs yeah. i've never been to a club like not a strip club i clearly i've worked there never but ever like, been into no club. no not like the clubbing stuff so no. i don't fully know um what effect that would have just yeah. because I'm not really out there seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have friends that do work in, in like strip clubs and stuff? Um not close friends. Like as in I have um a very small group of friends and they're not actually in the sex industry. Yeah. Um I have a lot of people that you just know because you see them all the time. Yeah. Um that work in the clubs and stuff. Yeah. See I, I 
I've never really liked strippers because it seems like a fucking big tease. Like oh my god, that's why I didn't. Of fucking that's money, why I didn't want it as well. When I was doing the <laughs> stripping, you know, I'm doing a lap dance and I'm like feeling bad. I'm like, okay, we're done now. And they're, you know, they're like probably got a raging heart. I'm like, this feels a little unfinished. I feel like mean. <laughs> what is this? You know. So it was. I think as well, me on the inside, I was like, no, no, this isn't me. Like, I can't leave you unfinished. This is not acceptable. <laughs> But you know, in a place like that, that is not a quality on. of service. Exactly, but not in a place like that, you can't obviously do that. Yeah. Um, but exactly, it is. It's a big tease. I think it's it's some people love that though. They actually love just strippers. Yeah. Other people, you know, get the strippers and they're like, oh, this is just a tease. More the club stuff because it's one on one lap yeah. dance. Whereas if you get a triple X show, for example, that kind of stripper, you're in front of like heaps of other blokes. It's yep. it is sexy at sometimes, but it's actually more funny and entertaining because there's a lot of um fun tricks and stuff you do in the show. So, pe- so what's your best trick? <laughs> what's um, the number one? Well, okay, so what's the one that I'm gets the think. reactions? <laughs> well, I have really good um vaginal muscles, so, so I you can do weights and shit, or yeah, yeah, it's, it's a secret. What <laughs> it's a secret? Um, you know, you maintain that, you, you know, to um be able to do things like that. So I use like a toy. I'm, you know, having a good time, you know, playing with myself with the dildo. Um, and I can shoot it about like a meter. So I can That's like... That's fair effort. Spring out. So I'll get some guy to sit down and I'll be like, oh yeah, sit there. And he'll be like, okay, I don't know what's happening, but okay. And it's probably <laughs> even just over a meter, probably a meter and a half. Um, yeah, you just start doing that and just spring it out and he's got to catch it like it's a, like a cricket ball. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's so fun. Like the guy's, you know, drunk and they're like, yeah, this is so fun. Yeah. You know, that's not gonna make them blow their load they're gonna be like they're gonna go wow that was really hot like she's really hot she's tight or whatever yeah they're gonna have that thought as well but they're also gonna be like wow that was really funny really cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah i caught it it's, kind of thing or, like the, or no um, it's slippery uh the ping pong shows in, in yeah like yeah in exact same kind of thing like, like it's it's more of an entertaining thing yeah um and the typical you know you pull a ribbon out thing they're like yeah it's like a magic trick but it's kind of like x-rated <laughs> so you do all the fun silly stuff um and then, you know, the dildoing is definitely sexy, but I'm, I have a very good mix up of shocking, sexy and fun. So, so do you um, do you concentrate and have a routine or does it just... No, do no, I, have a, I definitely have a routine. Absolutely. Yeah. Mine, in saying that, though, it's not like routine, like I'm doing it, I look like a robot. Yeah. Like it, you have a routine in place. Unless that's part of the routine where you kind of like do the robot. <laughs> That'd be pretty not cool. Not for me, not for me. I'm, I'm too sexy for that. <laughs> but no, so you have a routine like Haven't guidelines. Have you seen those new fucking robots like in Japan no. and shit? Oh, yeah, the sex ones. Dude, man, they're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The sex ones, they're, some of them are like hot. Some of them are hot. Yeah, I'm like, God, lick, no. Like, <laughs> I'm like, stop really ruining the industry. Like, get away. We don't, I don't, I don't want no competition. That's some how robot. robots are going to take over. You know? I know, they're not, ta- they're not gaining weight. They're looking all sexy. They're looking the same 20 years later. Exactly. You know, they're probably getting an upgrade. They're looking yeah. better, and better and in 20 years. suddenly you realise... Oh my god, that <laughs> robot's just fucking killed everyone. Taken over. Yeah. We're going to be Terminator. It's going to be fucked and up. And Terminator's going to be like some hot, like, naked chick, though. Well, there was that hot chick. Um, uh, was it Scarlett Johansson? Was she in the, like, the yeah, Terminator? Yeah, I remember chick? that one. I loved, I loved that um, movie. Yeah. That was so, good. do you, you're a performer. Mm hmm. Do you want to do other type of performing away from the sex industry? Like, no, would you. No. I absolutely love what I do. Like I love entertaining. Like I said, back to that, how it's, um, you know, is it all planned? You have a thing in place, then you do the show and it's kind of like, it depends on how the crowd's reacting to things and you might change things a little bit or just, you know, get them involved and it's really fun. But I love that. Like I love the sexy side, the um, extreme side. To me, like I don't really, this, this is my talent, you know? Yeah. You know? This is your thing. This is my thing. If you're like a comedian, like, you know, that's his thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. If, just because he likes entertaining as a comedian, he's probably going to stay doing that, not doing something else. Well, and that's what I mean. Like, you know, you're obviously a person that likes to be in the spotlight. Yeah, um, yeah. And like a comedian, you might be great at doing stand-up and yeah. then, you know, get a show like Seinfeld. Um, yeah. If somebody came up to you and said, hey, man, look, I, w- I want to turn what you're doing, your life, into a sitcom, mm-hmm. would you be down? Would you go, yeah, fuck yeah, as long as I can play myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And have you um have you had have you had any offers from clients or from uh from your your shows or anything to do any other work, private work or um, just porn. 
a lot just of just porn. porn. A lot of but porn. But I'm <laughs> everyone's just like porn. But the thing is, like, yeah, why wouldn't you do porn? Because it doesn't pay enough. Like it's the yeah right. You know, unless you, I don't know how it all works. So this is my interpretation. Unless you're, you know the high up famous porn size you don't really get paid that much for how much work you put in yeah um and i assume to get to that point you got to put in a lot of a lot of effort and a lot of you know bullshit whereas me i'm getting paid an hourly rate yeah um i've you know f- from just a few people i know they've done porn they might get say three grand right this is yeah. you know not high you know not like a high-end um well-known um, not the Stormy porn Daniels, star. 180 Yeah, grand, yeah, yeah, exactly. Not that shit. stuff. But, you know, <laughs> you know a, a really hot girl, you know, she's doing a set. You could be there for eight hours, you know, recording and stopping and starting and all that kind yeah. of stuff. And say so you get three grand. That sounds like good money. Yeah. But you could be there for like eight to ten hours or something. Yeah. You know, to me, you know, I, I could be getting like 700 for one hour. You know, so that's, 700 that's to eight hour, to $900 an hour with, with no recording, no evidence of the the what yep. just happened yeah um you to me i would go why would i be doing porn for so much less and then other people were less likely to hire me because they can just sit at home and watch me and wanking well this is true this is true yeah. and, and like so, you know, was, yeah i'm just i'm before. not a porn star yeah i look like a porn star i've been told but i'm more um the porn star you can take well, home you've, de- you've definitely got some porn starry type yes assets. maybe <laughs> <laughs> it does help it does help with the sale but yeah just yeah. You know, I do a bit of stuff. You know, I do um, do do videos with clients, and sometimes they um, they like it, and then you know, I post that on my Twitter, like all censored and stuff, yeah. and you can't see who the client is, of course. Um, but that's more of a tease, so clients can sort of see me in action and go, "Wow, like she looks good doing that." Just part of the marketing. Yeah, it actually is more of a selling point. It's not yeah. about it's not about for them to you know if they want to wank over that cool, but really it's all censored. It's pretty tame compared to what you what yes. you can see online for free. Yeah. Yeah. It's more kind of preview like an advert like here you know this is what you can purchase well and i mean it used to be and again technology i mean it's given us so much it's given us the ability to, mm. to actually do that yeah, where yeah. you know back in the day it would be you know in the paper or something and there's <laughs> yeah the, no, you know there's the end of the sports section and then there's all the fucking escorts there's all the strippers there's yeah, all the exactly. bloody uh, double eight double five numbers you can ring up and nana's wow. on the end of the line and go yeah. oh yeah mate i'll fucking whack you off or something <laughs> yeah. like that but yeah, exactly. Do you, do you find that that's probably the most consuming thing besides the actual work about the marketing, about being able to 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 make sure that people are aware of services or yes, absolutely, up to date? oh, absolutely, like putting yourself out there. Like I show my face, and I'm a bit more of a public figure, obviously. Like I'm here, you know, I'm yeah. definitely out there. So it does help with my business. People see that you're not just some fake profile. They can look and go, oh, she does look like her photos or, you know, I can sort of see by her videos that looks like a quality service from what I can see, you know. Yeah. I can see like a little teaser. Um, helps a lot. What for, for somebody who was going to or had ambitions of mm-hmm. getting into, you know, the industry, whether it be stripping or, or escorting, yeah. what, what do you think the number one bit of advice that you'd be able to give them would be? Mm. Just to really think about it. not that there's anything wrong with doing it but a lot of people are a bit delusional like a lot of girls come in they might be a little bit you know thinking oh I'm so hot I can get money but then they want to be selective like you can't just be like oh I'm so hot and I don't want to sleep with hot guys well yeah if that's your perspective then don't do it because you are going to be sleeping with normal people yeah you know of course if you, it's your right it's your body if you want to sleep with just a hot person cool but you're not going to last in the industry with a mindset of being too picky in that way like yeah. you can be picky of course safety wise but don't be like oh well i'm not sleeping with anyone fat or you know anyone who's over 30 blah 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 yeah so just people if you're gonna go into the industry really look at what it is and you know not just think it's i'm so glamorous i should be paid and yeah. that's a lot of naive girls that generally don't even end up in the industry it's not the girls that are in the industry the ones that are yeah. have, usually have their head screwed on and know what's going on. The ones that want to get in the industry, yeah, don't really know what it's all about. And you know, it's That's it's the biggest often thing. Uh, you know the, the the prostitution side of things mm-hmm. is often referred to as the oldest industry in the yes, world. Yes, it is exactly. Is it still a big industry? Oh, I would think it's only getting bigger. Yeah, definitely. Since I started, which was two years ago, um, there's a lot more girls out there. I don't know if it's just that it's getting bigger or it's just becoming more surfaced. 
Yeah, that, um, that's what I was trying that, to think of before. That I'm, I think it's maybe a bit of both, yep. like definitely a bit of both. Um, yeah. And you you think with more, you know, um, with it being in the limelight a little bit more, that there would be less tightening of laws. And I think oh, South God, Australia yeah. has like the tightest laws. It in, does, yeah, it does. It's more about the brothels and stuff though because of, you know, um, all that other other stuff and the trafficking and all other bullshit. Yeah. But I think a lot of it's excuses. They just try to make it sound bad when they have no, even they have no idea what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so stupid. It? Like it's um, really, really stupid. There was like a whole international website shut down because it was, yeah, yeah. you know, Oh uh, my God. Yeah. And that was because of, um, interstates, um, international, inter- international. Like, yeah, people sorry, and yeah. shit like that. Like, that, that was, and that's what was really unfair because that was absolutely, just bullshit that things like that can affect everybody else yeah and they get associated with it it's like that must be the same as that well no it's not you just need to put things in place to um monitor that and you know avoid that not the whole thing not just a blanket solution yeah because they're basically and... saying it's all the same thing it all yeah. needs to be this it's like no that's actually completely separate yeah. and you need to put laws in place and protocols in place to deal with that yeah. you know the trafficking and all other stuff that actually has nothing to that's do... that's some pretty fucked up shit. Yeah, and I mean, like, well, that's, you know, for example, me, like, why should I, because people are doing that horrible stuff, which it is horrible. Yeah. But, you know, I'm choosing to do my my job. Well, you know, yeah, it's like saying there's consenting. car accidents everywhere, right? No cars. And there's the that's taxi exactly, driver going, well, fuck me, man. That's exa- my livelihood. <laughs> that's, a, exactly, that's a really good example because it's exactly like that. Just because something is, in a sense, associated or people use that yeah. doesn't mean everybody in that is in the same position or is bad or whatever yeah so yeah. where where do you see like do you see yourself doing this for a long time do you see longevity in in well uh, well i'm hoping to do it for um you know as long as i can yeah so I see how my body holds up and yeah. so you know it's a very visual industry so at least at least a few more years do you definitely. have to do a lot of working out and watch um, what you eat and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, watching what and, you eat, absolutely. I, I don't definitely don't work out that much. Um, I'm still young, so I'm pretty lucky. That's all, you know, easy to maintain just naturally. Yeah, yeah. But I'm getting to that point where I'm definitely like, you know, you're getting older, you know. I'm almost <laughs> 25 now. So, you know, you've got to start, start watching, you know, watching yourself a little bit more and, you know, working out. So that's um, slowly happening. So if, um, if everything was legalized tomorrow... Mm-hmm. And uh, and then everyone was allowed to do you know, escorting, mm-hmm. um, but there was a cap. No one could charge more than two hundred bucks. Would you keep doing it? Well, the thing is, in that I definitely would not. Yeah. Um, because I want more money. I could just go get a normal job. Yeah. And probably earn the same. Um, that would be really bad because it would be almost like you can't tell someone what they can and can't charge for their own body. That is like almost like. That's awful. That'd be so really bad. Do you think that there needs to be more regulation of services or regulation of laws behind prostitution? Oh, I think the whole thing's just a mess, honestly. Like, I have no... Like, I don't know enough about it to sort of have too much of a say to be like, oh, they should do this. Yeah. I just think they really need to evaluate what the issues are. Yeah. Um, and the laws are stupid. Yeah. Like, they're putting laws on stuff that's not even the issue. Yeah. Um, which makes it hard for us, you know? to work around it like I do like I said I'm pretty lucky I know the rules and I work around them but it would just be easier for me as a business to not have to deal with that have you ever been in trouble for for any of it no I'm super lucky again I you know because I haven't worked in a brothel I don't have an in-call which that is um quite illegal you know because it's technically a brothel yeah you know if clients come to you so yeah no issues for me so what happens if uh, you know you you got the you got the message and it's all good and you go rock up at a house and it's the cops? Generally, I'm not going to go into the details, but if a cop was going to go to that length, yeah, um, it'd be silly for him because he would have to do certain things to catch me out, and I wouldn't do those things. Yeah. Okay. So it's just it's just it's not it's not what you know it's what you can prove that yeah. typical thing so yeah. even though they clearly know they can't yeah. prove yeah. it so yeah they're kind of at a dead end there and, is and really that's not even the issue like you know um instead of cash like go oh, i'll give you fucking some cocaine oh um, yeah often often a lot of people and i just say oh no thank you like i don't i'm not i don't i don't party but if you that's what people call it partying yeah i say oh you know i don't mind if you party but that's not my thing sorry 
Because I'm not judgmental. If someone does that, it's absolutely fine. What about ice? No, I've never been offered that. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I know it's a bit scary because I know that it's quite a heavy drug. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been pretty lucky. I'm not really exposed to to drugs. Like, man, that's surprising. I don't know if it's just the clients I see or what it is, but no one really has been like here have some drugs like it's not as associated as you think it's very less associated with the escorting it's more associated with the stripping but it's not actually the strippers yeah it's the people hiring the strippers are the they... strippers are just it's just their job yeah people on the weekend people party they yeah. drink they yeah. have fun that's what they're doing and the strippers just happen to be there you know or they're at the club and guys go drinking at the clubs yeah you know that well, that's not really the strippers it's more the people you know, going to see the strippers. Oh, well, yeah. But so the escorting, people aren't really going to be on drugs as much because generally that makes the sex not really work out. <laughs> yeah, true. Whereas, you know, if you're watching a stripper, you know, you can be drunk, you can have a lot of coke and you're just like, yeah, this is fun, this is hot as. But if you're, you know, trying to be intimate with someone, you know, the there's junk's not going to work. They're going to be like, I paid all this money and, That's a fucking waste and I've of had money. some drugs and now it's happen? not working. Yes, I have. And I, I warn people, I'm like, if you have... Like you can tell when people message you, you yeah. generally they admit it or whatever, and ju- I just won't see them. Yeah. Not because I'm judging them, but I just say to them like, <laughs> "It's gonna be a waste of your money." Yeah, I'm man. just like, <laughs> I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna leave with all this money because your thing's gonna be all shoveled up, and I'll be like, yeah. "Well, what can I do with this?" Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. <laughs> but again, generally, because I'm you know a higher class escort, don't really get in those situations. That's probably more you know you're at a party you know you're not an escort you're just drunk and you're having fun time and you go to get with a guy and he's had drugs that's kind of when that scenario happens yeah it's not so much in the paid part if you're paid the guy's going to be like i'm having this thing working i've just paid x amount it's on it's on so is that guy doing coke and then doing viagras as well and (laughs) yeah i don't don't even know how well that works like i said again it doesn't really happen for me so i don't really know too much it's just like anybody like even if i wasn't an escort everybody knows drugs affect can affect the male you know yeah male performance yeah um it's not that i'm escort that i know that i just know that because no sometimes it's hard to go to the (laughs) toilet next to another dude let alone fucking anything else you know (laughs) jesus christ it's tough being a guy sometimes yeah exactly it's fucking so yeah no the drug side um, is not really a problem for me there's no one that's really um, so a few stigmas pushing that that you can either major stigmas on it major stigmas yeah so a few a few other stigmas that you can either bust or confirm or something Mm -hmm. Um, there's always the um, the uh, the stigma of uh, bikies running brothels or running yeah, strip see, clubs that and I don't... trafficking women and yeah, see, getting drugs through. And, see, and or... that is what makes the laws so strict and they're all over the shop because they think that. Yeah. Which So is it true? Not necessarily, no. Like, again, I don't know enough like I don't work at brothels yeah. but it's not how they think yeah. I'm not saying that there wouldn't be some corruption in certain things but it's like in anything yeah. there is corruption in a lot of things where it is absolutely not how they think Yeah, and yeah. I yeah more often than not I would say no to that absolutely no and so one of the and that's other, from personal experience knowing people I could back that up with facts one, one of knowing. the other things that you've probably already kind of busted already is that you know any girl who's a prostitute or an escort is going to be doing it for drugs mm-hmm. or because she's a mum with a million kids and she can't afford to, mm-hmm. to keep her kids and, yeah, and, and whatnot. Yeah. Or that there's some bloke who is making her do it. Yeah. All those three reasons. I'm not saying there wouldn't be those cases. Of course, that could be happening. Yeah. But generally, no. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. no. And, and the other one... It's like anything, like any job. People just have a job because they have a job. Yeah. That, it, that's really as simple as it is. It's just, I go to work, I have a job, just like the next person. Well, the, the, other, the other stigma, I guess, is that... Um, is And, and you, you may not be able to answer this one because mm-hmm. it's more, I guess, like a brothel. Like, if there's a brothel down the road, then there's going to be all sorts of bad people hanging around there. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that that's a fair enough assumption by, by well, people? Well, not really, because, it... again, the same thing... Um, these guys, for example, go into a brothel. They want to have some sex or have a good time or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know. Um, they don't want to go break into the house yeah, next door. Yeah. So it's kind of like they're not going to go in there like a dickhead or whatever because yeah. they want to have a service. If a guy's going there or being all over the shop or a dick or whatever, he ain't going to get laid, is he? Or he ain't going to, you know, get a hand job. Yeah. He's going to get nothing. 
So generally, no, it's just people are horny. People want sex. And yeah. generally, if someone's going to give something nice to you, you're going to be nice. You're like, can I, can I have some? And then you pay and then they want to have a good time. <laughs> If you're being a dick, you're not going to get any, are you? Yeah, well, that's very and true. And sex is very desirable. You know, you don't go into a restaurant and order a nice meal and start c- creating a scene. You're going to get yeah. kicked out. It's the same thing. If you are going somewhere because you would like to get something, you would not... You, you It would be fine. You wouldn't be running a mark. Yeah, yeah. You'd no, be very, going to have a good time. Very true. Because it's only going to affect that person and they get kicked out. So, yeah, it's definitely not seedy and feral or anything like that. People think it's completely that's wrong. Yeah. Um, another stigma is a major stigma, which I hate. Um, a lot of girls are judgmental. I um, mean, ma- people, not just girls, sorry, yeah. like men. They think, oh, because you're an escort, you're dirty, you know, STDs, all the other shenanigans. Um, it's actually very inaccurate because we take a lot more precautions. Yeah. Generally, this, you know, it's not fair to say we definitely take more precautions, but, you know, someone's drunk on the weekend having a good time they're just you know a normal person not you know an escort they're not necessarily going to take as many precautions as we would because this is our business mm. where you know we're clear-headed we go into it with a you know a business point of view these people are drunk and having fun they're more likely to you know maybe make a mistake or you know something like that have an std or whatever because you know they're maybe not having sex with a condom or things yeah. like that whereas an escort she does that then she's risking her business, she's risking herself and she's not going to be making money, is she? So you'd get like STD checks Absolutely, quite often. Absolutely, yeah. I take precautions, abs- um, I regular STD checks anyway as like extra precaution. Yeah. Um, you just learn about things. You're very sexually educated. It is actually a proven fact that um, an escort will more likely be cleaner than than the girl you meet at the pub exactly and not saying the girl you meet at the club no is, you know it's, it's not judging normal people every, yeah, not saying like, every girl at the yeah, pub it's like you meet them all they'll get away get away it's you know i'm just saying people are people yeah and anybody can you know have an std or whatever you know if you're sexually active whatever but escorts get a really bad name when really we're taking more safety precautions generally than the next the normal person in just everyday society yeah yeah so absolutely. people you know think oh you know a oh, prostitute oh feral dirty blah 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 it's yeah couldn't be any more inaccurate it's and the most inaccurate stigma out there what i know this is going to be really hard to answer yeah what's the average profile of a prostitute then in what well, way well you, you know you think of um uh, the the two real extremes of mm-hmm. what a prostitute is going to be, and I'm just going to call them like pretty woman and I don't know gutter skank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah, and they're like that's obviously not fucking true, and usually that means that it's somewhere yeah, well, bo- in, in those cases. Both of those cases aren't true. Yeah. It's hard to say because again, everybody's different. Um, but generally, a lot of people could be you know like uni students, just you know making some money to you yeah. know support you know they can't pay it's expensive yeah yeah. you know or someone like me that you know is very self-efficient and just you know wants to buy a house have you know a glamorous life and sexually open-minded and confident chooses to do this job you know oh i can do it i want to do it so it's generally just any type of person from any walks of life um there could be aspects in your life that make you a little bit more resilient to this yeah like if you've had experiences in life that could make you a bit more open-minded or again as i said resilient but it's too hard to say everyone has their own experience their own story yeah um but really in short if you just see it as like anybody that gets into any job how do they get into that job everybody's different yeah and they do whatever job they're doing for whatever reason and do you think there's reasons that are the wrong reasons to get into into that kind of work? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like anything. Yeah, like like anything. You know, there's a lot of people that are not in the sex industry will go work a, you know, a job 40-hour week and they're slaving away and they're, you know, not even getting to come home to their family. Yeah. So any job can be like that. Um, but in this industry, yeah, if you're not educated enough or you're just not ready for the industry, you can maybe do some things that you shouldn't. Yeah. But it's not... I wouldn't blame the industry. It's more yeah. just like anything. People make bad decisions yeah. in it, in anything in life. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. so, is there anyone that you want to uh, want to shout out or or <laughs> give a fuck you to? <laughs> no, just no, no, go no, on. I, I like too many people. I'm too nice. 
Two I don't, nights. I don't like to say fuck you to anybody. No, and remember discretion. So oh yeah, true. I don't have anybody because it's all discreet. Do you ever struggle with that though? Like being discreet? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, definitely not. No, no. So I'm. I'd. I'd just fucking. Accidentally start, slip up. Yeah, I'll just start talking shit. Me. Like, like, oh, oh this oh, guy. Oh, oh no. No, no, <laughs> yeah. definitely not. Oh no, I'm never like that. Because you know, again, if you come into the industry, that is one of the things you should definitely. If you can't naturally be discreet or something yeah. like that, then you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Good yeah. advice. Yes. Good advice. Yes. All right. Well, thank well you. very, very wonderful. Good luck with uh, with <laughs> being a naughty girl. <laughs> yeah, and work on that distance, man. I yeah. reckon you could get two meters. Yeah, I know. How disappointing. <laughs> I know. Get a lighter dildo. Get a carbon fiber dildo and you'll fucking be shooting that thing across the, That's across true. the room. Well, usually people aren't even that far away. They're only about that far away. So I'm actually really good at aiming. I well, just aim to where power. they are. <laughs> oh, I do. Knock usually usually it does. I've had I've clocked some guy in the eye once. It was hilarious. <laughs> I actually, I remember, and I'll have to, I'll have to fucking delete this out as well. That's good. But I remember... Um, a friend of mine, I forget what birthday it was. It must have been his like 30th or something yeah. like that. And he got this stripper and, oh no, that's right. It was his fucking stepson's birthday. It was yeah. his 18th. So, and we were around 30. <laughs> was, yeah. He got this stripper and she was fucking violent, man. She like. Well, they can be, man. Oh man. She like gave him a wedgie and ripped his fucking See, underwear and See, it's so fucking and... annoying because there's so many strippers that do the wrong thing not that is wrong like there is dominatrix shows and if you get yeah. booked for a dominatrix show you'll be doing that yeah like stuff like that i personally don't rip clothes yeah but you can but there's so many people that just do fucked up shit they weren't meant to do yeah and then everyone thinks they're all like that yeah yeah Whereas like well i've seen no. that a couple of times like, that is common because part of a, a show is definitely the dominatrix is one of the biggest yeah. selling shows really? where you fuck up the buck for you know yeah true it's a big thing yeah. but a lot of people do I think a lot of strippers might do when they're not meant to. Not so much in Adelaide, though. Honestly, I, I know meant she all the put strippers a dildo here. Dildo in his mouth, and then was like riding the dildo, but she was like fucking slapping that booty booty on his head. And no, well, you know, I'm smart. You know, I have like a strap on dildo I put on their head, like it's elastic, so and it's all cushiony, so I can bounce on that fucker, and it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Like a like a miner's strap. Yeah, it's so funny. It goes on their mouth, and then everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's so hilarious!" It's just like a. A, a, a dick on their head like on their <laughs> mouth and then I just get them to fuck me with it that's great it's well because because you know I got a bit of a booty um, when I used to put the dildo in their mouth I didn't want to break their teeth so well, that's I that's um, what we said about Damo like he's no like, I, I, he's I like, do it the smart that way hurt no me. <laughs> it was terrible should have called me I would have fucking had my strap on I would have rode his face and he'd be like oh, this is nice and soft nice cushion <laughs> this is brilliant because it, it does it was it's quite it's like padded over the mouth well that's yeah that's so when you're good fucking idea. it um, they're just getting like my ass in their face, so which is does not a dildo complaining. wear out then? Um, of course, like I'm always buying new dildos. Um, yeah. but when you're doing a show, a show says 25 minutes to 35 minutes. Um, the dildoing part of it's not the whole show, and I have quite a few dildos, so you're only using them each like a minute at a time or whatever, oh. or a few minutes at the most. So they're not they're not really getting like ridiculously used. Um, and as long as you take care of them, you can keep them for longer. <laughs> so there's not like this, just a tray of worn out dildos. No, like God, a, no. Oh, fuck, I've gone through another one. No, this I'm crazy. super, I'm super, super like, um, always having the best stuff, the best quality. And, um, generally just, they might get broken when I fling them across the room. Yeah. Um, if, when the guys drop them so much, they are the ones that usually just get, cause they have like a thing at the bottom usually breaks. Yeah. Um, but other than that, they usually last a little while. I just <laughs> replace them when I've had them for too long, usually. <laughs> yeah true true yeah so have yeah. you got a favorite though oh i do it's just like really it's really nice really nice shaft nice big bulbous bottom <laughs> it's like purple and everyone's like oh so they just think it's a big black one it's the purple monster yeah exactly everyone just says it's black i'm like does it look black it's not that big but it's it's big enough it's imp- it's impressive enough it's impressive enough it's impressive enough does everyone ask for like the biggest like holy shit can you get the well gen- well yeah which I generally don't like to put anything too big in there it's just not comfortable yeah um, so I try to have impressive sizes but nothing that's too wild <laughs> generally guys they're just happy to see you you putting stuff in there they're like whatever you <laughs> do and I'm happy <laughs> oh man as long as it's anything in there it doesn't really fucking matter they're pretty happy they're pre- unless it's too small if it's too small they'll be like come on what is this yeah true and sometimes if, if has um, that ever happened before Oh, well, usually I do a progression. I'll start with a smaller one yeah. and then I go up because, you know, if I try to go the bigger one, it won't go in. 
Yeah, right. So I've actually got to do a progression. Yeah, yeah. Um, to work myself up. The guys at first would be like, you know, oh, bigger, but generally they know bigger's coming. Like they're yeah. not idiots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they're like, it's, it's we the see that. Radio. Well, they can see the big bag. And well, I, ha- I have a lot more dealers than most girls. So they can see my big bag and they see me pulling dicks out of it. They're like, there's more dicks in there. There's, there's definitely more in there. That bag's too big to just be holding so that. So what do you got, like a cricket bag? I've got one bag. It's quite big. It's it's quite big, about that big. It's funny. I'm um, like, have you I have got a like cricket s- bag? And you're like, yeah, it's a bit, that's a typical trust me, guy for, thing, isn't it? No, trust <laughs> me. For this bag, it's actually quite big. Really? Um, I have like, yeah, about seven dildos in one side. I have a bunch of anal toys in a different section. And then my um cool little trick trick stuff in another side. And then I have another bag for um just some other stuff during the show, the novelty stuff that you do. And have you got the like specific like this is the anal stuff this is the vaginal stuff absolutely absolutely this is the bouncing on the buck's head <laughs> absolutely i have it's all separate sections or when i'm with my um girlfriend we do lesbian shows i have like a section um for my strap on and the double ender and stuff yeah. like that so it's all sectioned out okay, has its own little home yeah <laughs> so you learn something new every day. Yes, yes. It's How to be OCD all... with your uh, sex toys. Yes, well, exactly. it's all about hygiene and organised. I can't be in the middle of a show being like, where is that dick? I need to find it. I've lost my dick. I've lost my fucking final dildo. This sucks. <laughs> and everyone's going, that's not big enough. Exactly, no. So it's, it's actually all very organised. Mine, mine's very organised. <laughs> but not as many girls have as many dicks as I do in my bag. No? I have quite a few. <laughs> Maybe that should be your catch line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sophie Grace, I've got more dicks in my bag than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's the other thing I've seen. So yeah. that's, um, what's your girlfriend's name? Uh, Miley Ryan. Yeah, so she always puts up on her, on her Instagram about vote for me in these sex yeah, awards. Yeah, and yeah that, and that's that an other. award thing going on at the moment. I'm just too, I'm too busy. I can't be bothered entering. It's just too time consuming. Um, but yeah, I do lesbian shows with her. She's really awesome. She's one of um, Adelaide's other strippers. Um, we're a really great, really great team. So is she going to win? Oh, I'm not. Well, I don't know. I'm, not, do I'm not. I'm not a psychic. No, I think it's, it's a big competition where like, I think like Australia wide, yeah. um, heaps people enter like porn stars. And I think you just win awards. Like okay. you just get like um, best... Um, you know Escort's best GFE service yeah, yeah. or best stripper or blah 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 it's it's honestly more of a popularity contest in my opinion yeah um, because the people that are voting well no offence they haven't met you necessarily Ooh, they haven't yeah. seen you so to me entering was a little bit silly because I'm kind of like well well it's not my clients voting because I can't you know they're discreet yeah. they're not going to be all on most of mine online yeah and, and people at parties you know they're married they're bucks they're not going to be like oh hey babe you know we've just had this newborn and we've just got married I'm just going to go you know vote for that stripper I've seen you know two weeks ago that I didn't tell you I had a, at the bucks party <laughs> you know so it's to me it's not really authentic voting yeah um, although Miley Ryan is very well known and very established so I feel like she would have a lot of authentic um, votes because you know people have seen her and stuff so that yeah. you know of course there's authentic votes too but um unless you have a massive following i find it hard because a lot of it is just popularity online yeah and because yeah. i you know i was shut down on instagram my following's not overly huge yeah i just know that i'm a popular stripper i'm a popular escort as in people that know me i give a good service have a good time but all that kind of stuff is just pointless to me. So you're not in it for the kudos. You're not no, in it for the oh, absolutely. Could not care less. If, if my business like is going trophy? well. Like, a, like an Oscar. As much thing. as that would be awesome, I would like a dildo trophy. But so no, I have no idea. Dude, sell them dildo trophies. I think it's more just status. I know, hey. Yeah. I think it's just a status thing. Like I said. And if you do sell them dildo trophies, I want a cut. I want a cut of the dildo <laughs> okay, trophy money. Okay, I'll do this for you. <laughs> yes. yes. Imagine going to a trophy store. It's like, all right, man, I've got this... <laughs> This weird question. Can you make me up some little plastic golden dildos? Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. I know you've got all the tennis players and the fucking netball players <laughs> and the footy players. Have you got just the big cock? I'm sure they would do that. There'd be a market for that. Like, because the hen, sure hens parties and stuff, they have funny stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Silly stuff. Yeah, dick penis straws. Shape. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Penis shaped this, penis shaped that. It's funny that there are all those things for, um, uh, for like hens nights and buck shows and stuff like that. Yet, then as soon as we're outside that environment, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe it. That guy just put sent me a dick pic. 
that yeah, guy that's just true. fucking or like <laughs> that chick's wearing a short that's too uh, wearing a skirt that's too short out yeah in there's public. so many like, it's so much oh, it, it is all over the shop like there's always blurred lines and all that kind of stuff it's just um i think you know we'll see where we are in 10 years time 20 years time and so on yeah. see if it um hopefully it goes the more sexually open-minded um rather than the other way hopefully yeah yeah i think i think there's a a place and time for everything you know you can't just as much as i like being naked i can't just go out and run to and be like you know what i want to be naked and i can be and you, you know were, um what's his name johnny <laughs> yeah yeah dude yeah the, yeah um, i've seen him yeah he's so funny his outfits he's always he's hilarious but he's wearing clothes at least he's not fully naked not fully naked but you know it's verging it's verging on not appropriate but he's mankini yeah, he's Man pretty funny. I said, he was at Sexpo. I saw pictures of him Yeah, yeah, he was at Sexpo. It was so funny. I think he made the paper from being at Sexpo as well. I think he did. Well, so many people were getting photos with him. I, ne- I never even heard of him until Sexpo. Really? They were like, oh, he's always walking around Adelaide in weird stuff. We thought he was crazy, but he's just like eccentric. I remember when I was a teenager... He used to every oh, really? every weekend. He used to be walking up and down the oh, mall, really? and he'd be he always used to wear. He'd either have no sh- no shirt, I think footy shorts or something, or just like like speedos and gum boots, and he'd just be <laughs> fucking cruising the fucking up and down the mall. Go and for like, it, mate! The fuck is this guy doing? Like what? And you know, when you're young, when you first see that, you're just like you fucking weirdo, man. Stay yeah, away from that yeah. guy. <laughs> and then after years, it's like, hey, man, there's that dude again. Yeah, exactly. He did an ad or something. I think he um just. I think he like maybe he likes the attention. But yeah, go on. I think he did an ad with like Fitzy from Nova. Well, good. See, it's fucking working out for him. him. Yeah, yeah. Like, see, I think it's great what he's doing. Like, it's definitely getting him out there. Like, getting him. It's made money, obviously. I would love to do an interview with that guy. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Gold will be like, can you please um wear the pink speedos for me? Yeah, you wear whatever you want, mate. No, you have to know the mankini. You have to tell him if he does it. He's got to wear I the mankini. I think that's his trademark now. The mankini. He will. He'll probably will wear that because you'll be able to see it. It will look very glamorous. <laughs> see his like little cleavage and stuff. It'll be it'll be hot as.